Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now my name is Steve and I am an idiot. Sometimes it's the least obvious solution that is the simplest, though how obvious something actually is depends on the rational thought of each individual. To me this motherboard seemed well and truly dead no matter what I tried. It switched on once when it was inside the Acer PC that it came from and after making a few little changes inside the case I assume that I had somehow fried it. Not once would it work after that, despite being tested with different Socket 1156 CPUs, memory, on an open test bench, and even, this is how desperate I got, in a different case. As if it would work in a different case if it was dead on the open test bench. What a tiny brain move that was on my part. This old Acer board has a dual core i5 650 atop it and hails from a time when two core desktop i5s were very much capable of playing the latest and greatest games. The hyper-threading helped them out as well. I'll have more on this setup soon, but let's combine those aforementioned words, more and on, into moron, because that is rather fitting. How then did I fix this board and CPU combo, which had been giving me grief for almost a week? Well, the answer lies with this, the battery. I had removed and reseated this a couple of times because this has proved to be successful for me in the past, but I didn't actually think about using a new one. 80 pence or one US dollar later, I had a new battery in hand and would you believe it, this thing booted into life quicker than you can say, Steve I can't believe you have more subscribers than brain cells. The Clarkdale i5 650 here with its two cores and four threads can still play games but pairing it with anything more than a 1060 would be a waste of time and money. Even then it's going to be the limiting factor in most if not all titles you throw at it. There will be those games that run fine on hyper threaded dual cores don't get me wrong and in those cases having the spare GPU power on tap is helpful but I'd very much suggest a quad core and hyper threaded Xeon or i7 for this platform because they can be found for very little money and still put up a solid fight. There's no point actually going out and buying an i5 650 when in a lot of cases the Xeons that offer hyper threading are only a tiny bit more. It depends on your budget though of course. The i5 650 actually released after the quad core i5 750 which was the first i5 CPU and will have aged better thanks to the four physical cores. Both should probably be avoided in 2022 though and if you find a cheap pre-built with one of these inside you should consider selling it and upgrading to one of the better 1156 processors I mentioned earlier for the best experience in the latest games of course. Still, despite the i5-650 being pretty poor as a gaming CPU in 2022, at least we now have a working 1156 board to play with, and this can be used in another build at some point in the near future. It really is nothing special, but it does offer basic functionality and it will do. It may be from an old Acer, but it isn't proprietary, so it can be put in any case and it should work just fine. There's not much else to this video but I always hope that by sharing these easy fix videos it may help some of you out, especially if like me you have exhausted all the other options. Now I say easy fix but the fix part only came after the hours of not fixing it but isn't that what PC gaming is all about? Hours of troubleshooting followed by minutes of gaming, the true enthusiast's hobby. Thank you very much for watching then, this has been a very quick Sunday video, if you enjoyed it leave a like down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.